Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 10, Identity in Christ, Part 2 by Andrew Womack. In our last lesson, we discussed what it meant to be born again, that in our spirits our hearts are changed. We used 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, which says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We began to see that when we are born again, a total transformation has taken place in our spirits. And the only way to know what has transpired in our spirits is through the Word of God. We cannot perceive it through external things, and we cannot perceive it through our emotions, because that is in the soulish realm. But in the spirit part of us, there is a total transformation. Let me use a few scriptures which show the things that took place when a person received Jesus into their life. Ephesians 4 verse 24 says, And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. When a person is born again, their spirit becomes righteous and truly holy. The Bible actually speaks of two types of righteousness. There is a righteousness you produce through your own actions, and you must maintain that type of righteousness in relationships with other people. If you do not live right and do right, your boss may fire you or your spouse may divorce you. So you need to have your own righteousness. God, however, does not accept you based on your external righteousness. God literally gave you his righteousness. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, it says that God the Father made the Son to become sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So there is a righteousness which goes far beyond our external righteousness and is based on what God did for us. We literally received the righteousness of God by faith in Christ. We were created in righteousness and true holiness. We are not growing into that righteousness. We are already righteous. A simple definition is that we are already in right standing with God. God is pleased with us based on Christ, not on anything else. Our spirits are where the change took place. We are already created in righteousness and true holiness and are brand new creatures. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Some of you may think, well, when I first believed on the Lord, I did believe I was totally forgiven and cleansed and everything was fine. But since that time I have sinned, I have failed God again. If you did, you failed in your actions and your mental and emotional part, but your spirit did not sin. It was sealed just as a woman puts fruit into a jar and then puts paraffin over it to make it airtight and to keep all the impurities out. God sealed you, so when you were born again, you received a new spirit 
and sin does not penetrate your spirit. You have a new identity. For you to have relationship with God, you have to fellowship with and worship Him based on who you are in your spirit and not in your flesh. This is really the great transformation in the Christian life, that a person has to change their identity. You have to relate to God based not on what you do in the physical realm, not on what you think in your mind, but by who you are in the spirit based on what he has done for you. That is a completed work, something that does not fluctuate, change back and forth. You were created in righteousness and true holiness. That is the spirit part of you. And to fellowship with God, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. You have to stand in this identity of who you are in Christ. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Question. The only way we can know that total transformation has taken place in our spirits is by the word of God. What does this verse say happened to us? Answer. Our spirits have been joined unto the Lord. We read Ephesians 3.17 That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Question. Where does Christ now dwell? Answer. In our hearts. Question. How does this happen? Answer. By faith. We read 1 John 5 verse 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Question. Who must we possess to have salvation? Answer the Son, Jesus Christ. We read Colossians 1 verses 26 to 27. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Question. What is the mystery that was hidden from ages and generations, but is now made known? Answer. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We read Ephesians 4 verses 23 to 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Question. What was created in righteousness and true holiness? Answer. Our new man, our born-again spirits. We read 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin 
to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Question. Whose righteousness do we possess? Answer. God's righteousness in Christ. We read Ephesians 1 verse 4. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Question. What is the standing of the believer before God? Answer. Holy and without blame. We read Ephesians 1 verse 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Question. How were we accepted? Answer. In the Beloved, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.